Did you know No Man's Sky has full electronics capability? People have built very complex circuits in the game, so it's totally possible. But it behaves really strange unless you know some crucial details. Good Guys Free here with Electronics 101, part 1 of this mini-series on No Man's Sky Electronics, so let's get started. Some of this is taken from the web tutorials of one of my Discord server's staff members. Links in the description. Before we dive into these builds, let's talk about tools and where to get them. Here's a quick overview. In general, all part blueprints are available in the Space Anomaly. Visit the Construction Research Unit, use Salvage Data to buy them. Salvage Data is found on planets always close to broken machinery. Wire. The simplest piece. It's just a cable that carries power from one part to another. The blueprint is free, but you still have to get it to open up the rest of the items. Unlike real life, you don't need to close a circuit. Biofuel reactor. This burns carbon or oxygen to generate power. Great for early bases. Blueprint cost, one salvage data. One charge holds for hours and generates 50 kp per second. What speed? Power? Solar panel. Free power from sunlight. Works only during the day, so pair it with a battery. Usually one battery per two solar panels. Blueprint cost, eight salvage data. Fun fact, solar panels work underground, no problem. Battery, stores power from generators or panels, so you've got juice at night or indoors. Blueprint cost, three salvage data. Holds up to 45,000 units of power. EM generator, the big gun. Taps into planetary hotspots for steady high power. Blueprint cost, 10 salvage data. Place it on an EM hotspot. Then we have some advanced spots, all of which cost one salvage data to unlock. Wall switch. A toggle switch has on and off modes. Pretty obvious. Button. A simple button switch you press to send a short pulse of power from one connector of the button to the other. Auto switch. The auto switch is like the wall switch, except that instead of a handle to decide whether the switch is in the on or off position, it uses electricity. Basically, there are two power connectors on two sides and another at 90 degrees to them. This one, called the base, controls the switch. When there is no power flowing into the base, power cannot flow. When power is flowing into the base, power can flow. Floor switch. Sits on the ground and activates when stepped on or rolled over. A recent update made it show its area of effect as a transparent red color like this. Fun fact, you can glitch it on the wall and it still activates when you pass by. Proximity switch. Pretty obvious, detects you nearby and allows power to pass from one side to the other can work from behind walls. Power inverter. The power inverter is very similar to the auto switch. It too has two power connectors on two sides and another at 90 degrees to them. The one at 90 degrees is also called a base. The difference is that the power inverter lets power flow when the base is not receiving power and stops the flow when the base is receiving power. To make this happen, the power inverter has a direction. When the base is pointing down, like a T-shape, the left side is the input the right side is the output and the base is, well, the base. Alright, now that we understand how the different parts work, we can start building stuff with them. This is awesome for marking a path to your storage room so you never lose your way. Here's how to build it. It's got two parts, the activation mechanism and the light strip itself. Step 1. Build the activation mechanism. Grab a power inverter and stick it on a wall. Base pointing down. Place two buttons, one above the inverter, one below, both with their connectors horizontal. Wire your battery to the left side of the bottom button. Connect a wire from the left side of the bottom button to the left side of the inverter, then another from the left side of the inverter to the left side of the top button. Hook the right side of the bottom button to the base of the inverter. Now the top button starts it and the bottom button stops or resets it. Step 2. Set up the light strip. Line up your lights. Wall lights work great in a row, as many as you want. Just keep them far enough apart because when they are close together, they will light each other up. Below each light, place an auto switch with its base, the T-shaped leg, pointing left. Wire the top connector of each auto switch to its light above. From the activation mechanism, Run a wire from the power inverter's right connector to the bottom of the first auto switch. For the next light and auto switch, wire the bottom of the previous auto switch to the bottom of this one, then connect the previous auto switch's top connector to this auto switch's base. Repeat that bottom to bottom and top to base for each light and auto switch until the last one. 
from the last auto switch wire its top connector back to the base of the first auto switch. Lastly, from the top button's right side connector, connect the wire also to the first auto switch's base. Hit the top button and a light starts rolling. Every time you hit it again, another light enters until all lights are on and you need to click the reset, which is the bottom button. That's it. How does this work? Well, the critical thing to understand is that No Man's Sky evaluates the state of electronics once every second, not more. So we start with the button unpressed and the left side connectors of all elements receiving power. Neither auto switch has power at the base, so neither will let power flow to the right side connectors and the two lights are off. When we press the button, the game registers the button is pressed and allows the power to propagate to the wire on the right, but nothing else happens. When the current one second interval elapses, the game looks at all the items at the time of evaluation. The first auto switch now has power at the base, so it should allow power through. The button was pressed, so after this evaluation it will be unpressed. The second auto switch still has no power at the base, so no power flows. The evaluation is done and the game acts on it. It turns the output of the first auto switch on, making both wires blue. Since the game doesn't want you to see a blue wire with the light off, it turns the first pill light on. The second wire reaches the second auto switch, but will only be evaluated later. The button is unpressed, so it turns the output of the button off. After about one second, the next evaluation point arrives. Now the button is already at rest and nothing happens with it. The first auto switch no longer has power at the base, so it should be switched off. The second auto switch does have power at the base, so it should be switched on. The evaluation is done and the game acts on it. The power outputs from the first auto switch are turned off. This causes the first pill light to turn off. The second auto switch's output is turned on because that was the result when it was evaluated. This lights up the second pill light. After another second, we evaluate again. Now both auto switches have no power at their base and so both will be marked to be off. The game then acts on it and turns off the second pill light. When we connect the output of the second pill light to the base of the first auto switch, this causes the first auto switch to evaluate as having power at the base while the second pill light is on, making the circuit repeat. And now you know. If you found this useful, hit like. If you want to be notified when the next part is released, consider subscribing. Good guys for here, and I'll see you again soon.